Hello, my name's Kevin, this is Dirty 20 Gaming, and this week I'm talking about rolling less dice and describing the results. I know, rolling less dice sounds like heresy to gamers, but hear me out. I only let my players roll if, one, there's a chance of success. The classic case is the bard who gets busted in a foreign castle 20 feet away from the king's chambers, rolls a 20, and talks his way out of it. That's crap. Guards aren't that stupid. It doesn't matter if he rolls a 28 total result on his die. For one thing, critical successes only count on attacks, not on persuasion rolls. And secondly, I don't care if he did roll a 28. Court guards aren't stupid. They found an odd person 20 feet from the king's chambers. They're going to jail. So don't let them roll unless there's a chance of success. Secondly, don't let them roll unless you need a randomized result. Not every action needs a roll. If there's no time pressure and the door's not trapped and getting into this room isn't essential to the plot, let the rogue pick the lock. Don't make him roll. If he fails, he's just going to wait five minutes and roll again, so just let him pick the lock. That does change, as I said, if there's time pressure or if that's essential or if it's a very difficult lock, then of course you make them roll. But for standard stuff... I know it's funny, but don't get your party trapped behind a locked door for 45 minutes because nobody can roll over a 12. Unless you're looking for comedy effect, in which case, go ahead. Now, here's where I cross the line into what most players would consider gaming heresy. Not every attack needs to be rolled. I said it real slow so you could hear me. I'll say it again. Not all attacks need to be rolled. If you've got a fifth level party going up against a horde of kobolds, don't have them roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. Just assume that each one of them takes out one or two per round. Keep the math simple. Describe what they see, but don't make them roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. On the other side of that, the kobolds are going to have a hard time hitting your party, so absolutely make them roll. But to speed up these huge monstrous combats like that, just describe each turn how the player destroys two kobolds with the swing of a sword, or the smash of a mace, or a fireball spell, taking out a whole room full of them. Only roll if there's a chance of success a chance of failure, and you need a random result. This idea of not rolling really comes into its own with skills based on role-playable scenes, for lack of a better phrase. If, if your characters are good at role-play and they're role-playing their skills and their stats well, then let that role-play decide whether they succeed or not. Don't make them roll. On the other hand, and this is an important proviso, some players have characters with a high stat or a high skill that the player does not share with the character, and they can't or won't or aren't capable of role-playing it well. In that instance, let those players roll, and then it's up to you as the DM to describe what happened. I have kind of a rule of thumb for this. If a character in, in 5e, make your modifications for other systems if you're using them, but in 5e, if your character has plus 5 or higher on a skill or a stat, I let them accomplish most of their attempts. I only have them roll if what they're doing is truly difficult. An important point here, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I'm going to come back to it. In 5e, critical fails only apply to attacks. 
So there's no reason to have your party members rolling in the hopes that they might roll a one and mess it all up. That's not how the system works if you're playing it rules as written. So let me give you an example. You've got a character in your game that has an insight modifier of plus seven. Just tell them what the other people in the room are feeling and whether they're being lied to. Unless the target is repressing their response or specifically trying to hide their reaction. Most people don't most of the time. When you surprise somebody, you can tell. And that's me, and I do not have an insight modifier of plus seven. So in other words, unless it's a challenge or unless somebody is specifically trying to deceive them, let most of these go. Don't let them roll. Just tell them they succeeded. Now, whether you have them roll or not, we are entering part two of this video now, whether you have them roll or not, describe the results if they don't. Describe the location and the damage of each attack. Tell them about the sweat on the brow of their opponent after a successful intimidation. And again, if a player isn't able or willing to roleplay a scene, for example, you've got a really nice player and they're just not comfortable being an intimidating ass, don't make them. Have them roll. And then you, as the DM, describe what happened. Do it for them. If you do it enough, you might, just might, get them to try to RP it next time, or the time after that, or the time after that. I got an extra note here. This is kind of an add-on. Feel free to have a successful role have unintended benefits. So have an opponent drop their shield. Their armor class goes down by two. Or have them knocked back a step. Or maybe they even surrender from the power of a single strike. Now, whether they stay surrendered or not is up to you and up to the party. Do they tie them up? Do they watch them? Uh, you know, anything can happen. But have those benefits added on to successes. Make successes more special. And again, even if they didn't roll, if it's an obvious success, still describe what happened and still describe, not every time, but sometimes describe that added extra benefit that they gained. So to summarize real quick, only get your players and your NPCs to roll when there's a chance of failure and when a random result is needed. And when rolls are made or not, describe the results. Don't, for goodness sakes, be this DM. A 14 hits roll damage. Six points damage? Okay. Don't do that. Be this DM. Your mace smashes into the orc's rib cage. You hear the crack of his ribs and his breath oofs into your face. It smells so bad it nearly makes you sick. You can see his rotten black teeth clack shut in pain. Not better. Right. So, in all of these videos that I have ever done, it's been pointed out that I have never mentioned this. But apparently, it's really helpful to my channel if you like and subscribe. So if this was helpful, if you enjoyed it, please do click those buttons below. Uh, apparently, it makes a difference. But enough of that foolishness. Enough about that. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching and game creatively. Bye.